Welcome to another episode of Titan PI TV, where we look at the inside workings of a live operational investigation agency, that being here, Titan in Derby. Thank you for listening. I am your host, Simon Henson, and Man- Managing Director of Titan Private Investigation Limited. So today's a little bit different. In most episodes, we discuss subjects within the industry, kit, commonly asked questions, services. There's an array of information and episodes that we've had. This one's a little bit different. It's a case study. And before I carry on, I'd just like to say this has been heavily sanitised and we have had permission to use it. It's very rare we would ever use a case study, but this one's quite funny to a degree, I suppose. Um, So it's very rare that we would use a case study and we certainly wouldn't without permission. So this is entitled The Phantom Cock Artist. Yes, you heard that right. So this was a client who was experiencing childish phallic symbols being drawn periodically on a number the number of their house on a sign at the bottom of their drive so it was a drive that led up to a house and it kept having these phallic symbols being drawn on it so initially the client smiled and just rubbed it off because it was with a dry wiper pen but it then became more and more common it became from monthly to weekly to almost daily the intensity increased massively. The client was worried that this might escalate, although it was slightly annoying them, the fact that every time they came off the property or onto the property in an evening, they had to rub these phallic symbols off. They were starting to wonder what it might lead to because the frequency had obviously increased. They weren't getting a reaction. And what would it lead to? So the client spoke to the police. Um, The police debated whether it was a civil matter or whether it was criminal damage or whether it was becoming harassment as the police do they thought about it for a long time probably easier just to deal with it as a criminal offense but they got nowhere the client got nowhere with the police so they rung titan titan went out did a quick recce of the address and and advised that it would probably be best to catch the culprit by using a covert covert camera which is hidden so no one will know it was there and it had a good view within the curtilage of the grounds of the client um, with a view up towards the sign from behind it so it would have the artist leaving his phallic symbols hopefully with a, a full facial so to speak so after two days of the camera being in place um, the phantom cock drawer attended the address and we were able to see that the offender was wearing dark clothing they had a a bicycle hat on uh, and also dark face coverage and they attended the address on a bike so we're able to get little from it other than the frequency so every time we left these in for two weeks every time the offender came they they came to the address in the morning between between 6 20 and 6 30 and they did it again in the evening uh, between 3.45 and 4.15. And at this time of day, or this time of year, should I say, it was dark at that time of day at both times. So from that routine and information, we're able to assess that potentially this is someone going to work for maybe a 7 o'clock start, finishing at 3 o'clock, and coming back past the address. So we went to the, the client. Uh, we gave them the product that we'd got which they informed the police of, but once again, weren't particularly interested. And we then said, you know, we've got what we've got, but we can't tell you who who this person is. So we advised a mobile surveillance. So it was following, uh, deploying two surveillance operatives and then following the offender away when he kept, when he came to the address and try and house him. And from our assessment, that was going to be done in the evening because we assessed that he was working a 7-3 and doing it on his way home client sanctioned this two surveillance operatives were deployed there was always going to be the risk that the day we chose the subject didn't leave his phallic symbols because it wasn't every day the day we chose though it did happen the subject came he came in his dark clothing the same mo he would draw his phallic symbol and he'd be away two operatives followed him away and we managed to house him once we'd housed him, which is finding where he lives, we then made able to do a desktop exercise 
to try and identify who the person was. From our computer systems, we're able to say that there's a male and a female that lived at the address where he went. He was obviously male, so we've now got a name for him. We've also got an age. Once again, that's given back to the client. Client goes to the police. This time, the police, because it's a little bit easier, decide to deal with it, and they go and caution the individual, interview him under caution. We've also got his details, so potential there's a civil litigation there, but the matter stopped the criminal damage, stopped the harassment, and there's been no further issues. So that's a great way where you can use a private investigator, if the police aren't interested, to cut something dead in the water before it becomes more serious, which I personally think this one may have done, as the client did. Anyway, thank you for listening. That's a, a little bit different episode, a little comedy, joke, humour. However, it's not always humorous for our clients. It was initially, but things can escalate, and that's when we need to take action. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's another episode of Time PI TV. Thank you for listening. Give us a thumbs up, please, and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss more. Till next time.